We again welcome everyone who's with us tonight, both uh, in body and in live stream. It's good for us to be together. Amen. There's a certain peace, you know, that comes from praying as we just have. It's a pleasant experience. Tonight we're again in the Gospel of John. This will be our seventh exposition of it. We're going to be in verses 15 <coughs> through 17. Now the superiority of Christ was confirmed by those who truly knew him. They acknowledged he was superior. They just didn't look at him as like a friend or an yeah. acquaintance, something like that. The more fully he was revealed to people, the more superior they saw him to be. And the more worthy he was to, whatever it cost to maintain connection with Jesus, these people were willing to pay whatever, whatever it cost. Now, no individual should turn to a person of the world to learn about Jesus. Let's take the historian, Jewish historian Josephus as an example. He lived during Jesus, the days Jesus was on earth. Josephus was born in 37 or 38 AD and died sometime after 100 AD. He was around when Jesus was around. He's a notable historian. There are all kind of quotations from Josephus, but he never was a disciple of Jesus. He was just a historian, that's all he was. Whatever information he provides about Jesus is just novel information. He said he was crucified, but he didn't know why he was. That he was reported to rise from the dead, he didn't know why he did. So this is not the kind of person we ask about Jesus. Or somebody that's a scholar on the Bible just for scholar's sake. Whatever information we receive about Jesus must be from someone that knows yeah. Jesus. Amen. That's why you, some church members, you can't ask them about Jesus because they, <laughs> they're not acquainted with him. So don't be asking them about information about Jesus. Now, John the Baptist was chosen empowered by God to testify about Jesus. He was given insight to him. And Jesus chose 12 apostles to be his witnesses. They were going to communicate things about Jesus that you just couldn't learn from just anybody. They were designated his witnesses. Ye shall be my witnesses. Now this doesn't suggest that believers shouldn't testify about Jesus. But they should only do so if confirmation of their testimony can be seen in their lives. Right. If it can't, don't be talking about Jesus. That's, this is how God works. Only the people who know him, are committed to him, should tell somebody else about him. Yes? You're mentioning of Josephus, in my own personal studies, people who are not scripture writers, secular historians, anyone, they write almost nothing. Even when they mention Jesus, it's always in a very brief passing. It's from my, just my own observation, the Lord's deprived the world of having that testimony of Jesus. So, I mean, even people who did know a lot about him, they didn't say much, though. If you want to know anything about him at all, you have to go to the witnesses. Yes, you do. Oh, Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now, we come to the testimony or witness of John the Baptist, of course. He's preparing the way of the Lord. He's telling people what they need to know to pursue after Christ. He was not personally totally unacquainted with Jesus. We know that because he said, I have need to be baptized of these. He, he knew something of Jesus. We don't know the extent of it. He, 
And he said that, I have needed to be baptized of thee before he knew Jesus was the Son of God. So, so he didn't have like an extensive knowledge at that time, but God gave him extensive knowledge as he entered into his, uh, his ministry. John the Baptist exhibits understanding because he gave his life, you know. This is a revealed divine characteristic. He enables men of understanding to speak to others about himself, his son, and his truth. These are the people he employs. You can't pick this up at school. Not even Sunday school. You've got to walk with Jesus before you can talk about Jesus. You've got to be trusted in him, believing on him, living for him before you can ever receive a right to talk about Jesus. You've got too many people talking about Jesus that don't know what they're talking about. John the Baptist was not such a man. All right, here's our, here's our text, John 1, 15 through 17. John bear witness. I say, John bear witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is before, be preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness have we all received in grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Amen. John, bear witness of him. This is, see, what is this? John, bear witness of him. Well, what, uh, what did John say about Jesus? Well, he did say several things. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. That's one thing he said about Jesus. Whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor. That's something he said. He will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. That's, hmm. He will take the wheat into his garner. He it is who is coming after me. See, I'm here talking to you, but after you've heard me, you're gonna, yeah. he's going to come. He's preferred yeah. before me. He said, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. He said, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him. In John 1, 34, he said, This is the Son of God. Yeah. See, that's what he said about about Jesus. He cried, shouted, mm -hmm. shouted to the crowds, New Living Translation says. He exclaimed, one version says. He said loudly God's word. He pointed him out and called. Message Bible says, this is the witness of which our text speaks. It wasn't a witness about Jesus. It's not what he's talking about. I told you some things he said about Jesus, but this isn't what he's talking about here. This is the witness of which our text speaks. After he told people about Jesus, he pointed and said, there he is. He's the one. That's what, he was, that's what the witness is saying. That's what the witness is saying. How this ministry is needed today. Amen. Someone who can present an exhibit of someone Christ is working in. Say, that, that's, the one, that's, that's what we're talking about right there. That's what we're talking about right there. Some have risen and see false Christs have risen up. I am Christ, some people risen said that. Another Jesus is being preached, not the real one. And we say, that's, that's, not, that's not the one. No, 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 that, that's not the one. Yeah. 
Now, you may have to have a lot of courage to say this sometimes. You can sometimes you say, oh, no, that's not Jesus you're talking about. That's not the real Jesus you're talking about. But it'll provoke some response, believe me. The masses of professing Christians do not know what the record God has given of his son. That's 1 John 5, 10. The record God has given of his son. It's God who has told what he wants told about Jesus Christ. It's the kind of thing that can be confirmed in a person's life. That Christ can be lived out in front of people's eyes. Now, when he is, we can say, that's the one we were talking about. Whatever's moving that person, that's the one. That's the one we we're talking about. And those things too, whenever that person can be pointed to and someone can see it, the Lord will demonstrate a lot of things in oh, that yeah. person for people to oh, see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can see how rare this yeah. is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you're living in a bad generation, the, the response will not always be pleasant. No. God. You've got to, first of all, first of all, the church has to proclaim what Jesus produces. Yeah. What Je who Jesus is, what Jesus did, what Jesus is doing, what he's producing. A lot of people haven't been told that yet. They, they haven't been told yet what Jesus produces, the kind of person Jesus produces. When a person is inhabited by Jesus and Jesus is living in him, they are a certain kind of person. Yeah, a lot of people don't know this. They just say, I'm a Christian. I'm, well, big deal. That's what I got to say yeah. about that. What kind are you? Yeah. Uh -huh. The witness, We're talking about witnesses here. Witnesses. See, there are some people that wear the name, but they deny the name in their works. Right. Yeah. They don't live like people that are dominated by Jesus. Let's put it in the words of Scripture, Titus 1.16. They profess that they know God, but in works, in works, in works, they deny Him. They just don't live like a person that believes in God, that believes in Christ. That's why we pray about things like we did tonight. That's why we do this. It's too easy in our world to wear the name Christian and live like the devil. It's too easy to do that. He, the devil, or he's the one that offers the things of the world to people. He did it to Jesus. He's still doing it, but some people don't know that's what's happening. You can have a new car. You don't have to drive an old car. You can have one of those modern telephones. Oh, I don't mean to be too personal, but this is how personal it is. You don't have to settle for something old. Step up and get the good stuff. Who's promoting that? Devil's promoting it. Amen. I'm not saying it's wrong for you to have those things. I'm saying the devil would love just to fill your life up with those things because it always takes a lot of your time. Tell me. Just as a passing note of interest, tell me if you that have modern phones don't spend 50% at least more time on the phone than you ever did before. Hmm? Tell me it doesn't consume more time than a telephone ought to consume. Well, I can't go to the doctor's office without sitting someone piddling around with their phone. Yeah? Well, I don't want to get off on that, but you understand what I'm saying, that the Lord, that Satan tries to distract people to stuff that's going to pass away, and he is very subtle in doing it. Amen. It's not your business to examine the other fellow about this. You just mind your own business on this and make sure you're not distracted by stuff. It's called covetousness in Scripture. This is why, see, we're talking about a witness to Christ. 
This is why carnality in the church is so wrong. This is why it's so wrong. It's why not going on to perfection is so serious. Because Jesus cannot be seen in that kind of person. There's no witness. See, there's not a living witness. There's not someone that says, well, that a good work has been done. We cannot deny. See, <laughs> that kind of thing is insane. They saw the boldness of Peter and John. They marveled. <sighs> they had a witness, see. We're talking about a witness now. A witness is someone that can point out evidence, see. There, that's what we've been talking about. We said <laughs> that Je through Jesus a person is born again. They put off old things. They put on new things. And they cease living for self when they start living for God. And there it is right over there. That, that, there you're looking at it. See, that's a witness. John said he's preferred. He's prefer, preferred before me. Now this is a man talking that there had not been a greater prophet than John the Baptist from the beginning of the world until then. He was the greatest prophet until then. I mean if somebody somebody else could say that and that wouldn't be <laughs> wouldn't mean anything. If you were to say, well, Jesus is greater than me, we would we wouldn't like to say, whoa boy, that's really something. This wouldn't be impressive. But when John the Baptist says it He's, as far as the people were concerned, he was talking about another man, as far as they were concerned. He said he preferred, that is, he has a higher rank. He has a higher rank. You know, there are those that Jude said, there are those that despise dominions and speak evil of dignities. You remember that? Jude and, Jude and Peter both talk about that. They despise they don't like someone that's greater than them. They're, they're, rebel, they're rebels. See? John wasn't that kind of person. He's preferred. If you've got to make a choice between him and me, choose him. He's preferred. He surpassed me. He ranks ahead of me. He has priority over me. That's the way that it is in the kingdom of God. So after you've testified of Jesus... Witness of him, make sure the people know he's greater than me. Every religious leader ought to be able to say that audibly. He's greater than me. For he was before me, even though John was born first. <laughs> John, was, John was born first. But he says he was before me. His goings are from everlasting. When, Jesus, when John talked about Jesus, there were a couple of his disciples, when they heard him say that, they fo started following Jesus. Yes. We can't bind this on other people. It just, just like John didn't bind it, leaving him and going and following Jesus. He didn't bind that on all, all of his disciples. Some of his disciples were still following him when John was in prison. You remember, he still had, mm -hmm. still had disciples. Mm -hmm. But eventually... They all had to follow, yes. follow Jesus instead. So you can't, you can't make somebody yes. prefer Jesus. Yes. Amen. Sure, it would be nice if you could. When yes. it, I guess it would be nice, yes. but you can't. But you can make sure you do Amen. that you prefer, because yes. He's before you. Yes. He was before you, uh -huh. and He's preferred Amen. to you. Yeah, Brother Gibby, he's also preferred of God more. That's right. Than Amen. The other man. Now, you see, this is a kingdom mindset. God's people want the best. That's what they prefer, the best. If there's a better covenant, that's what we want. If there's a better high priest, that's what we want. See, they want the better. People are really serious about Jesus. Eventually, they get to the point where they say, this isn't good enough. What I'm... What I'm hearing and where I'm at, this isn't good enough. I'm going to prefer some things that are better. God has given us better things. Yes, but Justin. I, uh, I, I encountered this when, when I moved down here. I had family that said, well, 
that you can serve God wherever on the whole earth. Yeah. But he's not in a specific area. Mm -hmm. But see, they didn't see that. that didn't see there was that. something better here yeah. than was there. Mm -hmm. So we went to yeah. where what the things that were better were. Even Abraham, he says there's, there's a better there's a better country. Yeah. I'm not sure. I'm not sure where it is, but there's a better country. Yeah. He does a better thing, see, yeah. so they, that's, they set their eye on it. Once you taste of the Lord, it takes the luster off the world. Oh, yeah. You might say it puts dust on the world, see? Uh -huh. Satan's trying to... Dim. Pardon? It grows strangely dim. Strangely dim, amen. 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 <laughs> Incre grow, increasing, that's right. Well, yeah, when you... To be called their God. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, when you see the light, you turn back and look at the other things, very dim, yeah. very dim. Yeah. <laughs> You can all see that, I'm sure, that this, your life is made up of this. To the end of your life, you're going to be involved in leaving the lesser for the better. Yeah. Yes. We've only just seen the tip of the iceberg yeah. or the hem of the garment. Yeah. But this is going to be, this, that's what makes this thing so exhilarating. That's what makes spiritual life so satisfying. You're constantly in this exchange of the worse for the better, yeah. Yeah. little for the bigger. All right, then we go to verse 16. And of his fullness have we all received and grace for grace. His, that's speaking about Jesus. And this is, this, John didn't say this. This is not a quote of John here. These are the words, these are the words of John the Apostle. We know that's the case because this is a post-New Covenant expression. <laughs> Nobody was receiving of Christ's fullness during the time of John. He wasn't made transferable at that time. So this is something John picks up. John could just start out the next sentence about Jesus after he's spoken about John the Baptist. That's what kind of person John the Baptist was. You could talk about John the Baptist, the next sentence to talk about Jesus. You can't do that about someone who's unholy. You can't talk about them and all of a sudden just switch and start talking about Jesus. But this tells you what a great man John the Baptist was. Did the glorified Christ mediating and ministering as a new as a great high priest, he's the one that transfers this fullness that we receive. Of his of his fullness. That's an interesting word. Other versions say from the fullness of his grace, from his fullness, from his full measure. Of his plentitude, Message Bible says we live off his generous bounty. That's some kind of vulgar there, but it. So what is fullness of his fullness? Well, technically, it's what Jesus is filled with. Is whatever filled him up is his his fullness. So our text has already said he was full of grace and truth. So that these grace and truth are like a summation yeah. of everything that's in Christ. Full of grace and truth. Now in the aggregate or collectively, the church is to all come to, into the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man. Look at that. The church becomes a man, a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Yeah. So the, the, Jesus is a repository for everything God has to give, yes. and the church is a repository of everything Christ gives. Amen. See? Right. Amen. But Christ has fullness, church has fullness, yeah. and you're to have some fullness. Mm -hmm. Having of his fullness have we all received? That's another way of saying we've been made partakers of Christ. See, it's, just, it's the same, same thing. Second Peter 1, 4. It's the same thing as growing up into the, being changed from glory unto glory. See, it's, just, it's the same thing as that. Of his fullness. Now, Jesus does never will transmit his deity to another person. Right. See, his deity or his godhood is non-transferable. 
but grace and truth that that's something else and there's a lot of that it's transferable it can go from Jesus to you he can Jesus can take what he's full of and he can transmit it to you yeah the yeah the Mormons ultimately teach oh, yeah. that. I know uh -huh. but I think there are some that that say that you're you can speak you can create just like God did yeah. Uh -huh. oh yeah but everybody can see that again. You, Jesus never transfers his deity because no man is that big of a container. Yeah. Yeah. It's just of, of his fullness. Yeah. Of it, some of it, a measure of it. I, I feel obligated to say you can have much more of Jesus yeah. than you probably think. Get as the church in the end, it will have the image of yes, Christ, so it but right. it's going to take all of them. That's right. <laughs> yeah. See, salvation involves a transferal of what fills Jesus to those who are joined to him. Uh -huh. When you join to the Lord, it's like a connection made uh -huh. that allows the passing of virtues from yes. Jesus to you. Amen. That's, <laughs> that's marvelous. See, it doesn't like throw it to you. Or shout it to you. Yeah, yeah. You're joined to the Lord, and it, that makes the connection through which these, this fullness passes to you. Now our business is to examine ourselves and see if we're in the faith. Do we have what's necessary to make the transfer mm -hmm. of the full? Do I want a lot of what Jesus has? Then your next question is, am I connected enough to receive it? Or are there leaks in the line? Maybe I'm not a solid connection. But there can be. Salvation is calculated to make this solid connection so God can righteously transfer to you what's in Christ. No member of the body of Christ is excluded from this. This isn't just for certain of the body of Christ. Yeah. It's different measures. I understand it. You get from Christ what you need to fulfill your role in the body of Christ. That's what it, yeah. what it boils down. And everybody has a role. Yes. Nobody is exempt from this. This reception not only has to do with character, it has to do with ministry as well. So see, this fullness of depths are both things. It shapes your character, and it fulfills your ministry. But it comes from Christ, who's the head of the body. I mean, it makes perfect sense. And he says, and, uh, and grace for grace. In other verses read, grace upon grace. The NIV says, one blessing after another. God's word says one gift after another. New American Bible says grace in place of grace. Net Bible says one gracious gift after another, one gift of repla replacing another. New Jerusalem Bible. Grace over against grace. Young's literal. Favor upon favor. The Apostolic Bible. Grace on top of grace. Literal translation Bible. Gift after gift after gift, Message Bible. Spiritual blessing upon spiritual blessing, and even favor upon favor, and gift heaped upon gift, Amplified Bible. I'm not satisfied with any of those explanations. I'm not satisfied with what the commentaries say on it either. I think they gloss this. I don't think it means a bunch of grace, a pile of grace. I, I don't think that's... What he's talking about here. It yeah. certainly is not replacing grace. That's right. Yeah. Give you a bushel of grace. Now here's another bushel of grace. I think that's what he's talking about at all. Mm -hmm. This is talking about an accumulation or growth mm -hmm. or advance mm -hmm. or being changed into the same image. Mm -hmm. Yes? It has a connotation that because salvation is of the Lord and that we don't, there's nothing that we can do independently of God that this grace or grace means that even our maturity and growth and, and 
that we receive grace even to advance. That's right. And, and so you can't, you don't just get grace and then say, well, I think I'll get more grace on my own. I think I'll just, I, I want to do something more. No, the Lord has to work in that to bring you to everything. If it's not the work of God, then it's not part of salvation. Yeah. Now, here's, here's how I do this is my own understanding how it works. You start out, you're filled with filled with the fullness of God. Then God enlarges your vessel. More grace. He enlarges it again. More grace. That's the grace upon grace. The grace upon grace postulates growth, advance, progress, conformity to the image of Christ. And there's and grace marks the growth all along. You grow in order that you might receive more grace. Yeah. We receive grace to enter into that enlarged That's right. area. That's, That's right. 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 Yeah. All, yes. Say it's grace for the purpose of more grace. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Yeah. That's right. Be yeah. Because you're because you have been called into the work of God. Uh -huh. yeah. You're you're part, you have a dispensation of responsibility of work. That's right. And it's a growing type thing. That's it's right. not. It's not just that. Your job is to always have five cents in your pocket. Yeah, right. It's not that kind of thing. The ministry itself grows. Look at Paul's ministry. Yeah. What he had, uh -huh. he abundance of revelations. Yeah. Then he had to have grace to right. keep them and understand them and proclaim them. Amen. Then he gets some more revelations. Uh -huh. Then some more grace comes yeah. to enable him to understand it and see it and proclaim it. See? Abundance of grace. Grace so for grace. The working of fellowship with God. That's a good yeah. way. Yes, uh -huh. that's good. Amen. Yeah. He called us into fellowship with himself by his son. The fellowship Jesus. involves this ex yeah. that's right. this exchange. Yeah. That's Amen. Right. Reciprocity. Uh, yes. So with this uh, grace upon grace, Paul does come and give you any more grace than you such as, I've got a small bus, it's not going to put heaps of grace That's on. true, amen. Uh -huh. and, uh, That's well, true. And I, I was thinking of um, how uh, when God gave the manna, you ate what you could. Yes. Nothing right. more, nothing less. Is it the same principle? Same principle, okay. exactly right. It's exactly right. Now, some say grace that replaces grace, so that would be you empty the bucket of grace and fill it up again. But that's not that's not what this that's is. That's right. Yeah. That's not what it's. A, uh -huh. It's a new supply of grace for a bigger bucket. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So you're not discounting the grace that you already have in a smaller container. That is that container grows. That's right. It's new mm -hmm. grace upon the grace that you already have. E even that is seen in the saving of the manna. They were 40 years in the wilderness, their families grew. So they started out being just being a husband and a wife. There's a husband and a wife and a child, a husband and a wife and two children, five children, ten children. The supply grew as the need grew. Yes, amen. Yeah. Grace for grace. Yeah, I think this is really misunderstood. Um, oh, I do too. You know, I think a lot of people think like, like the Romans did, where grace upon grace to cover all my sins, yeah. as opposed to grace upon grace because he's teaching you not to sin. Amen. Uh -huh. yeah. Amen. Yeah. That's right. That's right, man. That, that is a big thing to see. Oh, yeah. When you see it, like you wonder why you didn't, oh, yeah. you wonder why you didn't see it before. That's what Romans 6, that's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. so don't, sin will not have dominion over you because you're under grace. This would be an absolute necessity yeah. if you are in fact going to be a partaker of the divine nature. This is the means through which that that this is realized. That's right. Yeah. So John continued. You, you sense when John is saying these things, this is perfectly clear to him. He just he just speaking it out, you know. But uh, you got to kind of stop and drink it in because this is some pretty profound stuff. For because this is why it's this way. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Now the word for, of course, introduces an explanation of what's been said. He extends us. We receive grace for grace, for or because. And he makes this makes this wonderful statement. 
Yes. Before you get too far off of this point, grace for grace, you made the point that it's not the practice of switching, tra tra trade the grace, trade the sw switch it out if the one you're using gets old, switch it out for fresh. The, the picture that I get from the wording of that, grace for grace is exponential multiplication. So it keeps expanding and it expands more and expands right. more. So ev eventually, when gr grace for grace, it means that God did something with you that you couldn't have done with you. That's right. It's because, the, because the person is expanding. See, if a person is not growing or being conformed to the image of Christ, if that isn't happening, then there's no need. That's right. Yes. There's no need for this. So the... Now, now, in our society, if there's growth in a person or a church, it's like unusual. Uh -huh. yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. But in the divine economy, if there's not growth, that's what's unusual. Because uh -huh. the, the economy has been set up for growth. Yeah. Amen. Grace for grace. Well, you know, something else that I can see in this, too, is with, when we experience growth, it's because we have been helped to use the grace we've been given. That's right. That's right. And so the Lord gives <laughs> grace for the handling or the using yes. of grace. That's so right. Amen. You know, That's us. it. Uh -huh. That's it. <laughs> and, and then you're becoming more able. That's right. As you go, you're becoming more able. Are you going to say something, Brother Tony? Well, yes. Matter of fact, I don't know if he's going to mention it or not, but I like the way you put it in the lesson. It says that because the wisdom of men has been rejected. That's right. Any participation in the kingdom of God requires grace. Yeah. That's right. And uh -huh. so That's as, right. You, as you're able to particip participate more uh -huh. and, and, and increase in whatever participation you've been, you know, given to do, that's the grace upon grace. Grace uh -huh. upon grace. Yeah. For mm. the law was given by Moses. See, now this is not what a scholar would say. The law was given through Moses, one says. The law indeed was given through Moses because while the law was given, or Moses gave us only the law and his rigid demands and merciless justice. That's the living Bible. That went a little too far. As is written, said the law is given by Moses. Now as is written, Moses describes the righteousness which is of the law that man which doeth those things shall live by them. He won't live by grace now. He'll live by yeah. Yeah. doing. Yeah. All right, that's why we're receiving grace for grace. Because yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, like that, ended up, that didn't work too well, yeah. to say the least. Now, the law given by Moses was the best of all moral codes. That's right. When you come down to legislating morality, and some people say, you can't legislate morality. Well, that's what well, God did. Yeah, that's good. what he did, isn't it? That's right. Isn't that what he did? Yeah. But people say that you can't legislate morality. But that's what you, wherever there's not Christ, you have to legislate yeah. morality. Yeah. Isn't it? What they mean is they don't want morality <laughs> that's to be legislated. Right. <laughs> that's Amen. <laughs> We, man can't produce a law that's even equal to the law uh -huh. Israel received, let alone better. Yeah. The question still needs to be posed. What nation is there so great that has statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law which I set before you this day? Uh -huh. Where can you come up with a better procedure than, than the law? Yeah. Yeah. Is it some series of steps that you can follow to arrive at Victory, if you can't arrive at it by the law of God, you can't arrive at it by any law, Amen. regardless who made it. Yeah. And men do make all kinds oh, of laws. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and yet it said, the law made nothing perfect. Yeah. Hebrews 7, 19. So it was good. It was spiritual. It was righteous. It was holy. But it didn't make anybody good. Yeah. Which is what, that was what was needed. The needed was, need was for men to be made good, but the law, the best law, yeah. the holy law, the spiritual law, God's law, didn't make anything perfect. Yeah. 
It didn't get rid of anything that needed to be get rid of, and it didn't bring any resource you needed. So the law just stood by itself. It didn't take anything away. It didn't give you anything extra. Now, the scriptures remind us that the law was not of faith. It didn't require faith. The law, there's no commandment under the law that said, Thou shalt believe. Yeah. Yeah. There's no such commandment. The law did not require people to believe yeah, that's right. or to have faith. Uh -huh. yeah. It required they do. Yes. You had to do yeah. Amen. what was said. Now, this is Galatians 3.12 in the Amplified Bible. For the law does not rest on faith, does not require faith, has nothing to do with faith. For it itself says, he who does them, the things described in the law, shall live by them, not by faith. So that's, it. that's Galatians 3.12, which is the exact point Paul is making. The point is, the law didn't require you to have faith. But Jesus does. Yes. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Yes. Uh -huh. The law couldn't give you faith either. That's right. Couldn't do that. But grace and truth can. Yeah. See, grace and truth, when it comes, it removes what needs to be removed, yeah. and it brings what needs to be brought. Amen. That's what grace and truth. Jesus is full of that. He's full of what's required to get rid of what needs to be gotten yeah. rid of and to possess what needs to be possessed. He's full of what does that. You know, the requirement to do righteousness has not changed it either is. under law or under grace. That's right. Uh -huh. yeah. Some people talk as if it has, as uh -huh. if the imputed righteousness somehow gets you off the hook uh -huh. to where now it doesn't yeah. matter how you live because uh -huh. you're covered. Yeah. But the imputation of righteousness is actually for the purpose of doing righteousness. Amen. That's right. That's right. That the righteousness of the law yeah, that's right. might be fulfilled. But that's grace right. always has to do with doing something. That's mm -hmm. right. That's right. Mm. Yeah. You can see this, I'm sure. <coughs> grace cannot be joined to fiction, grace and truth. Yeah. See, grace and fiction, they don't, uh -huh. they don't work together. Grace and law, they don't... They don't work together. It's got to be grace and truth. Grace and truth. The way things really are. See, before you get grace, you got to know how things really are. You really are not acceptable. You really can't please God. You really are dead in trespasses and sins. You're really alienated from God. When you can accept that, then the grace that kicks grace into actually receiving grace without knowing these things. That's right. When you yeah. know them, That's then right. you get the grace, you can recognize it. <laughs> you think, we've talked some about that. The grace saves. Grace justifies. Grace equips. It strengthens. Grace is the environment in which we stand. Grace reigns under righteousness. See, grace. <laughs> Jesus is full of grace and he transmits it to you Amen. so all of these things that grace does can be done in and by you Amen. Yep. because of Christ grace is an enabler an enabler not just a cover like brother Levine mentioned it just is like a blanket Covers, covers the bad condition up. It addresses the condition, changes the person. When you're joined to him, then you're part, when you partake of Christ, that's the same as of his fullness have we received. See, that's, that's, that's what that's talking about. Our fellowship with him. We're called into the fellowship of God's dear son. That fellowship is the means through which the grace passes from him to us. There can't be a distance between you and Christ and the grace. That's right. So that's what that's what your job what your job is. When you when you come into Christ, you're born again, begotten of God, baptized into Christ, death, buried with Christ, raised with Christ. You're connected with Christ. Yes, amen. Now now the things that God that you need 
to negotiate the journey from here to there can pass through. But you've got to maintain that connection. That's the secret. Amen. You've got to maintain because it tends, it it tends, uh -huh. Uh -huh. because of the flesh. The law is weak with the flesh. Uh -huh. It tends to pull apart because yes. you're in the world where this this doesn't work uh -huh. yeah. if you're close to the world. So you've got to maintain that connection, not a loose connection, not a flimsy connection. Yeah. Yeah got to maintain that close connection. And if you do, don't doubt this, brother. Don't doubt this for one moment. If you maintain that connection, the grace will flow from Christ to you. Amen. God will push it through to you. That's right. It may look like it's kind of unreasonable uh -huh. to expect it. You keep the connection. Keep yourself in the love of God. That's what he's talking about. Yeah. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. That's what he's talking about. Amen. Keep that connection tight. And you'll receive grace for grace. Now, if a person wants to know the truth, that's the truth that makes men free. That's what we're talking about, that truth. He's got to be taught by Christ. That's what's got to happen. Because the truth is in him. He's full of grace and truth. So Ephesians 4.21 says, If you've been taught by him, the truth as it is in Christ Jesus, see? He teaches you. When he comes to dwell in you, he comes as a teacher yeah, to make manifest himself, yeah. huh? And to give you an understanding about God. He never quit being a teacher. So he does as you you so if you if you want to know the truth, you've got to be taught by Christ. You can't gain it just by like study. The Pharisees studied. Gamaliel studied. We're not against that. You understand? You understand? But the secret's not in the study. The secret's in the fellowship with Christ. The secret's in the connection with Christ. And when you study with Jesus, oh, your, oh, your study is very profitable. When you study with Christ, <laughs> that's how the disciples studied. They studied with Christ. And it was very, very profitable. Anyone think the Apostle Paul, when he was Saul of Tarsus, did not study? Oh yes, he studied under Gamaliel. When he got, when he got to study with Jesus, that opened all that up. Yeah. yeah. Well, brother, that uh, it's grace for grace. We receive grace for grace through Christ's fullness, because the law, which is the next best thing you got. It's the next best thing you got. If you're talking about getting suitable for God, that's the next, that's the preceding methodology. But it didn't work. It wasn't intended to work. So because of that, we went to this grace for grace economy. <laughs> Isn't that good? Any of you have another word you'd like to add before we close? All right. It's very encouraging when we yes. find our desire to grow in the Lord. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That we can see He's given us grace now, yeah. and that grace is to obtain more grace. Yes. Amen. That desire came from God. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. By he, grace, we have the desire. He works in you both to will. There's your, your desire. Yeah. And to do, see, so that that came. So when you feel this, don't feel frustrated. I want it, but I just don't seem like I don't stop right there where you want it, yeah. and analyze that for a moment. Yeah. You got that from God, Amen. and God's not going to give you a desire for something He won't get. He won't That's grant. Right. Then you can look up, you know. Amen. All right, we'll have a word of prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father. How we thank you for this text. We admit that it's uh, very profound. It's one thing to say it, it, but we sense the magnitude of it, but how gracious you've been to let us know these things and to assure our hearts that you're on the giving end and that you provided the means for the transmission of the good things you have to us through Christ Jesus. We thank you in his name. 
Amen.